I was wrong about Intel. Intel is on track to make one of the biggest comebacks in Silicon Valley history. And in this episode, I'm going to break down their aggressive plans to dominate the microchip markets, how it's going so far, and whether Intel could actually become the next Nvidia. I know, I never thought I'd be saying that either, but here we are. Your time is valuable, so let's get right into it. Gordon Moore co-founded Intel in 1968. He's also known for Moore's Law, which says that the number of transistors on a microchip will double roughly every two years. But about eight years ago, Intel seemed to stop following Moore's Law and started following Murphy's Law instead. Everything that could go wrong for Intel did. From multiple chip production delays that lasted years and losing Apple as their biggest customer, to supply chain issues, stiff competition, and decreasing demand causing massive drops in revenues and profits across the board. Intel found itself fighting battles on all fronts, and they were losing badly. By the summer of last year, Intel was bleeding so much money that Wall Street analysts were all but predicting the company's death by a thousand cuts. Absolutely horrendous. They missed consensus by like a billion and a half dollars. And that is unheard of. It's much worse than I think people would have thought. Um, this is the worst data center result that I've, we've seen so far in the industry, and certainly the worst that I've ever seen in Intel's. There, there's nothing to like here, at least in, in, in the numbers, nothing. Their stock was collapsing so fast that Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger had to go on national TV just to apologize to shareholders. And clearly, we didn't meet our expectations nor our shareholders' expectations. This is the bottom. We're rebuilding from here. Intel's performance only got worse from there. Let me put some numbers on it for you. At the start of 2021, Intel's revenues were $18.6 billion. They had close to 60% gross margins and earnings coming in a whopping 21% higher than expected. But just two years later, the revenue dropped to under $12 billion. Their gross margins dropped by 20 cents on the dollar and their earnings fell below zero. By early 2023, Intel stock collapsed by over 60% and they had to slash their famously large dividend by two thirds just to survive. It's worth noting that Intel is probably the single hardest company to run on Earth. Intel's main products are x86 processors for laptops, desktops, and data centers. That makes AMD their biggest direct competitor. Intel invented the x86 architecture, whose biggest competitor is ARM. So if you add ARM chips into the mix, Intel also has to compete with Qualcomm and Apple. And on the data center side, Intel competes with cloud providers that design their own chips, like Amazon, Microsoft, and Google. Oh yeah, and Intel doesn't just design their own chips, they build them too, which means they need to compete with TSMC, who builds chips for companies like Apple, Nvidia, and Tesla. Talk about stiff competition. But these are the most important markets to understand as an investor because the AI businesses of tomorrow will be built on the best made chips today. So let's see how Intel is holding up. Intel just reported their quarter three 2023 earnings on October 26th. Revenues and gross margins both were trending up and came in 5% higher than Intel guided for. And their earnings came in at a whopping 50% higher thanks to several successful product launches and cost cutting initiatives. Intel's client computing group covers their laptop and desktop processor sales, and it's their largest business unit by far. While client computing revenues were down 3% year over year, thanks to the PC market shrinking in general, operating income was up by 43%, thanks to selling more of their overall inventory and spending less money to do so. Intel is gaining ground against AMD's PC processors in a few different ways. First, there's the entry-level mobile CPU market. Currently, Intel's entry-level 13th generation processors are found in Google Chromebooks, which saw a massive uptick in sales earlier this year. This helped Intel take back 3% of the x86 market from AMD, bringing their overall x86 market share to a whopping 68.4%. That's actually a huge swing, because Intel doesn't really prioritize the semi-custom embedded chips that are found in video game consoles, smart home devices, and mobile robots. So if you only count computers, Intel owns a whopping 82.6% of the x86 processor market today. Just for comparison, Google currently owns 83.5% of the global search market. So Intel has a Google level hold on x86 processors in computers. And I expect that to continue, thanks to Intel's 14th generation Meteor Lake chips, which should hit the market by the end of 2023. 
These chips don't just increase clock speeds and core counts, they come with a dedicated processor built to handle AI workloads right on your machine. Here's how Intel CEO is thinking about the AI race right now. Let's talk about the AI space because the running of AI models is where you see your future. It's not all just about the foundation models, it's actually the running of them, not just the building. But can you just relieve some of the anxiety coming from investors about a lack of clarity over data center future? And indeed, what is it that they need to hear from you? What more can you articulate that really makes it clear to them that you're gonna be front and center in the AI race? Yeah, thanks, Carolyn. And, you know, really, you know, first let's characterize what we're talking about. This idea of creating, you know, these frontier or foundation models, as is described, versus using, right, and the training and the inferencing against those models. And I sort of compare it to like weather models. Not that many people generate weather models, but a lot of people use them. And that's how we think about this next phase of AI. How do we make this inferencing or the use of the models broadly available? And that's going to be, you know, in the client, right? We talked about the AI PC. It's going to be at the edge, right? In retail and manufacturing and uh, supply chains. But it's also going to be in on-premise data centers. And as we've said, as Instead of taking my data to the cloud, I want to bring the AI to my data center where the data is already, and finally, work in the cloud. I think this is a perfect direction for Intel to take. They know that big AI models are trained on huge clusters of powerful GPUs, which isn't where Intel really dominates. But inference is where a user runs those same models, like prompting ChatGPT. Inference workloads can run on much smaller chips, which means they can run on personal computers, not just in the cloud. That's why all of Intel's 14th generation Meteor Lake chips will include vision processing units, or VPUs. A lot of AI processing already happens on your computer today, like when you're on a call and you see a blurred or fake background, or you have a webcam with face tracking and gesture controls, or your microphone has adaptive noise suppression. Intel's VPU offers up to 10 times the computing power for these kinds of tasks, while using just 20% of the power. That's a 50x improvement in performance per watt over standard CPUs. While that's huge for laptop battery life, we could also see VPUs in desktops in the near future, as more video games, content creation tools, and co-pilots leverage generative AI as well. And for AI and data centers, Intel currently has their Gaudi 2 chips, which were introduced last year to compete with Nvidia's H100 GPUs. At a high level, Gaudi 2 outperforms NVIDIA's H100s by over 40% when it comes to training and tuning multimodal AI models, which are the ones that work with text, images, audio, and video, instead of sticking to a single mode. But besides a few specific use cases like that, Intel's chips tend to underperform NVIDIA's by around 9% in servers and around 28% in offline applications. But that makes Intel's chips real competitors for NVIDIA in terms of performance per dollar, which should make them attractive to data centers that can't get enough of NVIDIA's chips or want to make the most out of the H100s that they already have by offloading certain tasks to Intel's Gaudi chips. Also, Intel plans to launch their Gaudi 3 chips in 2024, which will have twice the computing power, 50% more bandwidth, and 50% more memory than their Gaudi 2 chips today. While these Gaudi 2 chips for data centers and the Meteor Lake chips for PCs are both built using Intel's 7 nanometer node, Gaudi 3 will be made with their newer 5 nanometer node. And that brings me to the biggest piece of Intel's massive comeback, which is ramping up 5 nodes in 4 years. When I say nodes, I'm talking about a specific chip manufacturing process. As nodes get smaller, they can fit more transistors onto a single chip. But the process gets more difficult. Today's chips don't really have transistors that are 7 nanometers or 5 nanometers in size. These process node names just call out big advances in a company's chip manufacturing capability. This is exactly what caused Intel's downfall in the first place. Intel's 10 nanometer chips were initially promised back in 2016, but they didn't come out until the middle of 2019. That three year delay is what forced Apple to drop Intel, design their own chips, and have them made by TSMC. Apple's chips are still causing trouble for Intel to this day, which I'll talk about more when I cover Intel's biggest risks. Likewise, I just talked about Intel's 7 nanometer Meteor Lake chips. Those were originally supposed to come out in 2020, but are just now coming out at the end of 2023. That means Intel's most recent two nodes took them about four years each to deliver on. 
Even their biggest competitor in this space, TSMC, takes over two years to ramp up a new processing node. And now, Intel's plan for a massive comeback hinges on them being able to ramp up five increasingly complex nodes in four years total. That's one node every 10 months with zero delays. That's why I said this about Intel's plan a little over a year ago. And we are on schedule, or ahead of schedule, on this audacious strategy that we have said five nodes in four years. It normally takes two years for a node. We're gonna do five in four years. Are these Intel folks crazy? Yep, promising 10 years worth of progress in just four years does sound pretty crazy. Wow, I looked so much younger back then. It must be the hair. So was I right? Well, here's what Pat Gelsinger had to say after their most recent earnings call. Our roadmap is strong, and we over-executed uh, in the quarter on our next gen, our Gen 4 product, but did a bit better than we thought in a lot of AI use cases in this area of inferencing. The next generation, Gen 5, we're already ramping that in production, and that's going to get announced in December. But next year's products, we're already seeing great health, and we're ahead of schedule on those, and those really improve our competitiveness. And the 25 products will go into fab in uh, the first quarter of next year. So our whole roadmap and execution has really improved and we start to see ourselves regaining market share in 24 in that area and I mm. think that will be sort of the final piece of the turnaround story when you know the market sees okay data center is back strong they're winning in the AI space you know that'll be the end of the turnaround story and people say okay they did it look I can't learn from my mistakes if I never admit them in the first place I was wrong about Intel they're releasing high-performance processors at competitive prices in every market. They have a solid AI strategy that focuses on inference and data centers using their Gaudi chips and on personal computers with Meteor Lake. And they're delivering their 2024 products ahead of schedule and are still on time for 2025. They're clearly on track to make one of the biggest comebacks in Silicon Valley history. And their timing couldn't be better since tech companies are looking for ways to diversify their chip supply chains away from TSMC due to Taiwan's heightened tensions with China. But Intel's comeback does have some big risks. TSMC also just had their quarter three earnings call. And on it, an analyst from JP Morgan Chase asked them if TSMC is going to lose chip manufacturing market share to Intel's five nodes in four years plan. TSMC's CEO, CC Wei, was confident that TSMC's upgraded 3 nanometer process, which is called N3P, will have comparable power, performance, and area to Intel's 18A process, which is the final one on their five node roadmap. TSMC's N3P process should be available in the second half of 2024, right alongside Intel's 18A. And TSMC will introduce their 2 nanometer process called N2X in 2025. Only time will tell if Intel's next generation nodes can stack up to TSMC's in terms of power, yield, and pricing. But one big difference is that TSMC has had their 3 nanometer nodes up and running for about a year now. In fact, Apple booked about 90% of TSMC's existing 3 nanometer capacity for their new iPhones, MacBooks, and iPads. If you have an iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max right now, you're holding one of TSMC's 3 nanometer chips. Besides financially securing TSMC's most advanced process nodes, Apple's chips pose another big problem for Intel. Like I said earlier, Apple's chips use the ARM architecture, which is the biggest competitor to Intel's x86. The MacBook nearly doubled its laptop market share since Apple made the switch, and it was the only notebook to gain market share last year by a huge margin. That legitimizes ARM processors and laptops, not just smartphones and tablets. The MacBook gained so much market share so quickly that Microsoft is getting ready to challenge Apple with ARM-based processors for Windows 11 PCs. Qualcomm has been making Windows laptop processors since about 2016, but their exclusivity agreement with Microsoft ends in 2024. And just a few days ago, it was reported that Nvidia and AMD plan to join Qualcomm in making ARM chips for Windows PCs as early as 2025. As a result of these reports, Nvidia's and ARM's shares went up by around 4%, while Intel's shares dropped by about 3%. So the market thinks that Nvidia, AMD, and Qualcomm joining forces with Microsoft to build AI PCs on ARM chips is a problem for Intel. Well, here's what Pat Gelsinger had to say about that. Pat, the story of this week has been chip companies entering the PC processor market on ARM architecture. How do you hold off those newcomers? You know, attention, for example, on Apple this coming Monday, and they have done well in that domain. 
Yeah, and I think uh, the AI, you know, PC as an exciting category. And hey, the idea of an ARM-based uh, PC, you know, they've always been sort of niche and low end with the exception of Apple and there it's not ARM, it's Apple and their ecosystem. So for the broader Windows ARM market, you know, it's always been pretty uh, low end, right? And insignificant in the bigger context. And as long as we deliver our roadmap, I feel very confident that as others surge into the AI PC space, you know, this is a lift to the overall PC market and will be you know, uniquely positioned to benefit from that. Intel shouldn't dismiss ARM processors and PCs just because Apple broke up with them. And they shouldn't discount TSMC's advanced processing nodes before even catching up to them. And that's on top of all the other risks that Intel is facing right now, like AMD's MI300X data center GPUs or Chinese chipmaker SMIC recently producing seven nanometer chips at scale for Huawei phones, with five nanometer chips potentially on the horizon over the next few years. Over a quarter of Intel's total revenue came from China in 2022, so competition from Chinese chips and limitations imposed by US sanctions are both real risks for Intel. I know this video is a little long, but I want to be extra thorough, especially since I was wrong about Intel in the past. So if you feel I've earned it, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. That really helps the channel out, and it lets me know to put out more research like this. Thanks. And with that out of the way, there's only one question left to answer. Could Intel really become the next Nvidia stock? Actually, my answer is yes. I do think they have a real shot. But a lot of things would have to go right for Intel and wrong for their competition. For example, if multimodal AI models take over the generative AI space, then Intel's Gaudi chips could suddenly outperform Nvidia and AMD where it matters the most. If ARM-based Windows PCs don't do so well, Intel will keep their massive PC CPU market share while the PC market grows thanks to AI. If the new transistor designs and backside power delivery techniques that Intel plans to introduce in their 20A node outperforms TSMC's current chips, then Intel could win a few big clients for their foundry business. And that's if Intel actually finishes all five nodes in four years in the first place. But if tensions rise between China and Taiwan, more chip manufacturing might move to Intel anyway, just to further diversify and secure chip supply chains. Those are just some of the big ifs, and I'm sure there are plenty more. But a lot of ifs also came true for Nvidia to be where it is today, and Microsoft, and Apple, and every other company I cover on this channel. That's why it's so important to understand the science behind the stocks. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Ticker Symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.